Right, let's talk more about that first presidential TV debate between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. The two men who want to be the next president of the United States. There have been loads of reaction on social media, as you would expect, with conspiracy theories spreading like wildfire and far-right extremist group The Proud Boys celebrating the comments made by President Trump. At one point in the debate, uh, Donald Trump was asked to condemn them. They've engaged in violence and provocative demonstrations and have been vocal in their support for the president. Let's see what he had to say. I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what are you, what are you, you look, what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. You want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and, and right like supremacists. Me to white proud supremacists boys. and right proud proud boys. Boys, Stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left. Well, let's talk about this with our specialist disinformation. Oh, sorry, there you are. Our specialist disinformation reporter, Mariana Spring. Hi, Mariana. Uh, tell us more about uh, the Proud Boys and Antifa. Proud Boys are this far-right, anti-immigrant, all-male group who, as you say, have been rejoicing on social media following Trump's comments about stand back, stand by, which they've interpreted as a call to arms. On their Telegram channel, which is a social media site, they've been sharing his, his comments, uh, praising them. They've created a new logo for themselves. Um, in order to, to rejoice that. And, and they very much see this as an endorsement of their group, as opposed to what the Trump campaign argue was Trump actually batting down and rejecting this movement. Um, Proud Boys have been very vocal about also trying to fight Antifa, which Trump mentioned. That's left-wing activists that Trump has accused of being involved in violence in the US recently, often um, baseless claims he's made with no evidence to support that. And Antifa actually was another topic that trended um, overnight during the debate because uh, Biden came out and said Antifa is an idea, not an organisation. And lots of Republican supporters were very critical of that. That's referencing this idea that there are conspiracy theories to do with this group, the suggestion they've been involved in setting fires or causing violence on the streets, which again has often been unfounded. Mm. And tell us about the most popular conspiracy conspiracy theories about the debate on social media. So the most popular uh, conspiracy theory actually started before the debate even began. It was this um, unfounded claim that uh, Biden was trying to wear an earpiece, uh, a listening device in his ear mm. during the debate and that he was refusing to let the Trump campaign check his ear. Oh, Biden's campaign uh, came out and said, uh, this is rubbish, um, but that didn't stop the Trump campaign sending out a text message um, about this conspiracy theory once it had gone mega viral on Facebook and on Twitter. And it was helped in going viral by groups like QAnon, who we've spoken about before. Um, QAnon is a far right conspiracy theory that believes President Trump is fighting a secret war against satanic paedophiles. Um, and that conspiracy theory has continued well, in, well into the, the morning here. Mm. Um, with and with people suggesting. This is an earpiece, and, it, and occasionally people talk to you in it. And the, the, the point that they were making about Biden was that he couldn't think of his own answers. So exactly. he would have to have someone telling him what to say in his earpiece. Exactly. But as as everyone can see with your earpiece, mm. it's quite easy to spot. To it's, it is. It's, it's massive. <laughs> it takes up your whole ear. So it's quite obvious that he wasn't wearing one and mm. there's no evidence to support those claims. The other really popular Facebook and Twitter um, posts and tweets um, have been in relation to comments Trump made um, about a sheriff who he said endorsed him um, in Portland. But that sheriff came out and said, that's not the case. Uh, I haven't endorsed Trump at all. OK. Right. So what impact, if any, does the social media conversation and some of the disinformation on social media have when it comes to this massive election in America? I think it's really important to remember that a lot of people won't tune into the debates. Rather, they'll hear about the debates mm. through what they see on their social media feeds, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And therefore, these kinds of claims being made, either conspiracy theories or these extremist groups, these are the things that they'll be talking about as opposed to those big topics that the candidates addressed last night. Thanks very much, Marianne. Thank you. Nice to see you.